Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive Channel. The actor Christian Keys has gotten a lot of reactions after he dropped the bombshell that he was harassed by two powerful billionaires and he was groped by a female actress. And a lot of people were suspecting that one of the billionaires who harassed him was Tyler Perry. Christian has worked with Tyler and currently his show All the Queen's Men is under Tyler Perry Studios. But Christian liked an interesting tweet that is now making people believe that it might not be Tyler Perry. And I'm gonna show y'all the tweet, but before I do, I first wanna thank Morgan and Morgan for sponsoring this video. Have you ever been injured in an accident and need legal representation? Look no further than Morgan and Morgan. Morgan and Morgan is the 21st century law firm that has completely modernized the injury law process. Forget the whole stuffy process of going to a lawyer's office for lengthy consultations and instead submit your claim and case details, sign contracts and upload documents with your smartphone. With eight clicks of a button or less, you will be able to complete the entire process of submitting your claim and have your lawyer review your case. Also, you will always be able to contact your legal team via text throughout the duration of your case. Morgan & Morgan takes the risk out of injury law process as they will never charge you a dime unless they win your case. If you are injured in an accident, take action to protect your rights and let Morgan & Morgan fight to get you the compensation you deserve. If you're ever injured in an accident, you can submit a claim at www.forthepeople.com impressive or by dialing the pound sign and law. That's pound 529 on your phone. Once again, thank you Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring this video. Now back to the video, I did actually do a whole video about Christian calling out the creeps in Hollywood. And I did a comprehensive breakdown of the video. He talked about how this one billionaire who he considered his mentor offered him $100,000 to strip. And he claimed that this same guy tried to push up on him while he was drunk. And he even grabbed his private area twice against his will. And he was very distraught about it because he wanted to knock him out, but he had to restrain himself because he was working with this person. And also this person is very powerful. So he knew that if he did try to do something, he probably would get blackballed. And Christian dropped a lot of hints. He said that this person has a very recognizable voice. He also says he has recordings of this person making inappropriate comments towards him. And he also has recordings of this person admitting to having male actors on his payroll to give him some freak off sessions, allegedly. So basically this person was abusing his power and Christian didn't say who it was, but a lot of people assumed that it might be Tyler Perry. Now Christian did like an interesting tweet that kind of led some people to believe that, okay, maybe he wasn't talking about Tyler. This tweet said, watching Christian Keys and I could tell he's clearly a victim, only three grand to his name and violated by a gay billionaire. And no, I don't believe it was TP, Tyler Perry. I wish Christian would have taken action. That man will still have his money and good name and Christian will remain broken. So this is what Christian liked. And obviously when people see somebody like a tweet, they automatically believe that they're in agreement with everything the poster says. And this post said, and no, I don't think it's TP. So maybe it's not TP. But even if it was, Christian Keys is not gonna mention Tyler Perry by name because he actually still has business dealings with him. He has a show called All the Queen's Men that is under Tyler Perry studio. So Christian is not gonna say it's Tyler, even if we believe it is, you know what I mean? A lot of people have speculations and there's been a lot of rumors about Tyler. I'm not gonna lie to you. However, I will say this, Christian Keys never mentioned any names. So it's not fair to assume that one of the billionaires is Tyler Perry. Even though he put some hints out there, it's not fair to make that assumption about Tyler Perry. Now, Christian did say that he was tried by another billionaire, a black billionaire, and this billionaire tried to come on to him as well. And Christian hinted that this guy acts like he's for the community and he makes all of these donations to all of these HBCUs. And what was interesting is Christian's friend, Claudia Jordan, hinted that one of the men, one of the powerful billionaires that Christian was talking about, 
is Robert F. Smith because she did post him on her IG story. And she also said this. Hey guys, I'm looking at all the comments online regarding the bombshell that Christian Keys dropped. He didn't say the names. People are assuming who it is. Uh, there's actually two people that I know of. And I said this on my show a, a few shows ago, I think it was last week, when the whole Diddy stuff, we was covering that. I was like, listen, there's a lot of women and men out there who are keeping the secrets of a lot of your faves. And if it ever really came out with what we, what most people have seen, what we've all heard whispers of, the industry would be on its ass. Okay? There's a lot more out there, y'all. There's the biggest of the big. There's the mid-level. There's the entry-level producers and agents and all that. Oh, child. Once again, let me just say this. Christian did not mention any names. He did not mention any names. So it's not right to assume, but people are speculating and people are talking. And hopefully all of these predators get exposed. Now I wanna move on and talk about this whole mess with Jonathan. Now the actor Jonathan Majors has taken a huge hit on his career ever since he was accused of putting his hands on his ex-girlfriend Grace Jabari. He was on his way to great things. He starred in movies like Creed 3 and Ant-Man and it seemed like his career was going up and up and up until this whole case happened. Now recently he was found guilty of two out of four charges and the specifics of the charges are very important because he wasn't found guilty of the more serious charges, but he was found guilty of third degree assault causing physical injury without any intent and also second degree harassment. So that was it. He didn't intentionally harm her, nor was he harassing or threatening her. He basically was found guilty for being a little too aggressive while trying to get away from Grace Jabari. That's literally why he was found guilty. Now the charges are minor, but the effects of it are major. This guilty verdict caused Jonathan to lose his deal with Disney and Marvel, and now he can no longer be a part of the Ant-Man franchise. Whew, that's tough. Now, for those who don't know the details of this case, earlier this year in March, Jonathan and Grace were leaving a Brooklyn party and things got a little tense between them after Jonathan received a text message from a woman saying, I wish I was kissing you right now. When Grace saw that text message, she lost her mind. She took his phone and Jonathan grabbed the phone away from her. And during this tussle, Grace said Jonathan injured her finger and the back of her ear and twisted her arm. But the driver who actually witnessed this said that she was the one who was being more aggressive, not Jonathan. Jonathan was trying to grab his phone and run. And Grace started chasing him, which is crazy because it's like, she's accusing this man of harming her and being a danger to her but she's chasing after him. I mean, what victim do you know chases after somebody they consider to be a threat to them? You don't really know many victims who do that, right? So the situation was very odd. And after she stopped chasing him, you could see her talking with other people, telling them what happened. And Jonathan's defense team brought into question her injuries because she claimed that he hurt her so bad and he broke her finger, but she was using her hands to tie her hair and from that angle her ear wasn't bleeding and after that she was spotted at the club and you could see that she was using her hand and this is the hand that she claims was injured she was stuffing her hand in her purse she was out there partying it just seemed like she wasn't in any distress or any pain and when she was asked about being in pain she gave an odd answer saying that sometimes she would feel the pain and sometimes she wouldn't it just seemed very sketchy and it kind of made you wonder if she got those injuries from Jonathan or if she got injured after the fact. And that was kind of the angle that Jonathan's defense team used. They tried to cast doubt in Grace's testimony. Also, following the incident, we all know Grace went out and started partying and then she received a breakup text from Jonathan. Jonathan at this time was staying at a hotel while she went back to his apartment. And from there, she was calling him 32 times she accused him of infidelity in a text and also threatened to take her life 
And when Jonathan came home to his apartment, he did call 911 because she was locked in their bedroom closet and he thought that she OD'd on sleeping pills. And also her ear and finger were injured and Jonathan's defense team was basically implying that she inflicted this on herself. But either way, Jonathan did call the police to get help because Grace was out of it completely. Even after all of that, Grace still had Jonathan arrested and Jonathan responded by filing his own complaint, accusing her of being drunk and hysterical and aggressive towards him. So as you can imagine, this whole situation was a complete mess. And I was a bit surprised that Jonathan was even found guilty in this case. If he had a better lawyer, he could have really gotten off scot-free. But I really think the reason why he was found guilty is because of some of the past incidents between him and Grace. I think when the prosecutors brought up these past disputes, it did affect the way the jury viewed Jonathan. All the prosecutors had to do was make this black man look like he was mean and evil and make Grace out to be the scared little victim and the jury would sway. They would sway in Grace's favor. And some of the incidents that Grace brought up did actually make Jonathan look kind of bad. She talked about one incident that happened last year in July where she was at a music festival and Jonathan was upset because she wouldn't communicate with him. And he was also upset that she mentioned her ex-boyfriend. So he threw a candle in her direction, causing a dent in the wall. Also, there was another incident that happened months later in September where he tore earphones from her ears and stomped on them. And Grace actually provided text messages of Jonathan pleading with her not to go to the doctor because he was fearful that she wouldn't protect him and he would lose everything. And also he was claiming that he wanted to end himself and he was calling himself a monster. I mean, it was just crazy and it did make him look guilty. Also, there was an audio recorded of him scolding Grace because she came home drunk one night and he was mad because she wasn't carrying herself like Coretta Scott King or Michelle Obama. <laughs> That was so unserious to me. <laughs> Do you understand that? Yeah. Do you really know this? Do you really? Yes. Then how dare you come home drunk and disturb the peace of our house when we have a plan? Grace has to be in a certain mindset to support Coretta Scott King. Do you know who that is? That's Martin Luther King's wife. Michelle Obama, Barack Obama's wife. I know, I'm not, I, I, I shouldn't have gone out, I'm no, no, sorry. Let me, just, let me just lay it out for you, right? If I am, I'm just gonna say this, my temper, my sh my trauma, blah, blah, all that, all that said, right? And I'm gonna say, I'm a great man, a great man. The woman that supports me, that I support, that we're, that needs to be a great woman and make sacrifices the way that man is making for her and for them ultimately. So this audio and these different incidents involving Grace and Jonathan just kind of shows you how toxic their relationship was. And I will admit, I don't think Jonathan is all the way there mentally. <laughs> There's something off about him. I don't know if it's the steroids. I don't know if it's the method acting. He ain't all the way there. And yes, he has some issues with his temper, but there's something off about Grace too. I think she's unhinged and she was being aggressive towards Jonathan and she was even chasing this man in the street. He was running for dear life away from this woman. So you can't tell me that she was in constant fear of her life when she was behaving like this. I mean, she was really doing the most and she made it seem like Jonathan attacked her unprovoked. When in reality, he was trying to get his phone and leave. She couldn't take the fact that he was texting another girl. And so she decided to bring this man down. I mean, it's really a shame. And I do kind of wonder if all of this was a setup because I did hear that Jonathan does not have the best reputation in the industry. There have been several people who have come out and exposed him. So it's possible that maybe he pissed off the wrong person and Grace was pretty much used to take him down. I don't know, that's just my whole conspiracy theory. But he lost everything behind this whole case. I mean, he was dropped from Disney and Marvel. I guess he didn't sign the Illuminati contract, so <laughs> he wasn't able to be spared. 
but he has been trying to revamp his image i've seen him walk around with megan good megan good has showed up to court and has stood by her man and this is the type of woman that jonathan wanted he wanted a strong woman like coretta scott king or michelle obama to stand in his corner and hold him down and he was able to get megan good to be that pillar for him and it's really a shame that he only sought out a black woman once he was down and out. I mean, when he was at the top of his game, he wasn't looking for a Megan Good. And that's who he should have been with because it would have been a good look for him. But no, he was out there cuddling up with an unhinged woman who drinks a lot. And this same woman brought him down to his demise. And now he wants to run to a respected black actress to salvage his image. And I think it's unfair. If we're gonna be honest, Megan doesn't gain anything from this either. I mean, if anything, she gains public scrutiny because now people associate her with a man who's accused of being aggressive and having a bad temper. So it's not really a good look for her in a sense because it doesn't do her any favors. But who knows, maybe her relationship with Jonathan is real and she might stick it out with him. However, I wouldn't be surprised if a few months down the line, I hear about them breaking up because I honestly do think Jonathan ran to Megan for PR. It's very likely that he used her to get support from the black community, particularly black women. And also if he were to come out on top in this case, his career would have continued to skyrocket and he and Megan would have been a power couple, kind of like Will and Jada, except without the entanglements and the drama. But yeah, they would have been a power couple but Jonathan did not come out on top in this case he was found guilty and even though the charges are minor and he probably won't even go to prison for them still his reputation was hit in a major way and I don't think he and Megan are gonna last much longer than this but I could be wrong we'll see we shall see if Megan is gonna stick around and rehabilitate Jonathan's image Megan has her work cut out for her though because She's gonna deal with a lot of scrutiny. And also, Jonathan is a little off. I kind of get the sense that he ain't all the way there. So I just hope that he doesn't take his frustrations out on Megan. I really hope he doesn't. But Megan has to realize that she is taking a risk by giving this relationship a chance. She's putting her own image on the line at this point. So I don't know how much Jonathan's PR team paid her, but. Honestly, she just needs to end the relationship now because it didn't benefit her in any way. But anyway, tell me what y'all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.